This story happened when Robin and I were very young. We were victims of the Stellaron disaster, and the family's Mr. Gopher Wood, who would later become the Dream Master of Penacony, saw that we siblings had no one to turn to and took us in. Later on, Robin and I lived a time with nary a care in the world. One day, after dinner, while my younger sister and I were lounging about in Mr. Gopher Wood's yard, we spotted a fledgling Charmony Dove all on its own. That baby bird was tiny. It didn't even have all of its feathers, and it couldn't sing. When we found it, it was already on its last breath, having fallen into a shrub. Probably abandoned by its parents, we decided to build a nest for it right there and then. However, thinking back, that winter was unusually cold, with fierce winds at night in the yard, not to mention the many poisonous bugs and wild beasts in the vicinity. It was clear that if we left the fledgling in the yard, it stood no chance of surviving until spring. So, I suggested we take it inside place it on the shelf by the window, and asked the adults to fashion a cage for it. Yeah, exactly like N-Man. We decided that when it regained its the strength enough to spread its wings, we would release it back into the wild. The tragic part, something that we'd never considered, was that this bird's fate had already been determined long before this moment. Its destiny was determined by our momentary whim. Now, I pass the power of choice to you all. Faced with this situation, what choice would you make? Stick to the original plan, and build a nest with soft net where the Charmony Dove fell, or build a cage for it, and feed it, giving it the utmost care from within the warmth of a home. I eagerly await your answer. It looks like he really has no intention of imprisoning us. If it's just a quit, back to the question. No special reason. I do think that a fledgling should have the right to... Let's see Fireflies Blossom. for his intentions right now, but based solely on that question, I would probably choose to build that dove a cage. So, this this is in line with Firefly's original thoughts, right? Because she, she actually kind of likes Penacone. The whole deal, like, her big, big moment is saying, I basically want to be in the cage, because... Even if I was going to release it back into the sky, it'd have to be strong enough to fly first. If I left it where I found it, I fear it never get the chance to fly ever again. That is, that is, that, that, okay, that, that's a good point. Arch. <sighs> that guy just casually throws this kind of- If it were me, I guess I, after all, leaving it there, it's bound to get hurt by wild animals. So, the reason behind this question why is this question? So, this right here is exactly painless, the philosophy of painless civilization. Humanity, this is what, what which was elaborated on greatly in Persona 5 Tactica. Like, a lot. Like, a lot of the setups here, it's for P5 Tactica, um, P5 Strikers a little bit. I mean, a lot, but and then people are but the fact that it's about the idea of survival that basically what we see here is when the world before humanity, the world before agriculture was a lot more complicated, a lot more chaotic in a sense, but nature in itself has its own order. What Sunday Jesus Man is trying to do is create his own order. The creation of an order of which, which fundamentally in this case is a human order. This idea, our desire to really, really 
alleviate the pain of others fundamentally will destroy nature. Because of because we are ourselves desire less pain, going out and, and making parks so humans don't have to get hurt by animals, pesticide, all of that. The problem is, so yes, it's about if I'm gonna get hurt by other wild animals. I mean, the desire for the less of pain of cattle leads to the death of wolves and them losing their territory. The world fundamentally changes in this case because of how we th uh, how we look towards it. But with that, there's the other framing of the cage with the cages. Build, 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 build the cage. Build, build the cage, right? We're build, we're building the cage from the Shawnee Dove. Or, like the old days, it's like, so, so the dove, it can't fly. So if the dove can't fly, if the dove never had a chance to live, <sighs> then it will die. <sighs> so this is where, yes, it gets a little bit libertarian. <laughs> um, liber libertarian, but fundamentally, that life of care is not a life that's meant to be. The problem with this framing is if we think about this as, if we say that Sunday is actually is Mr. Communism, um, that's not, I mean, if this is a boy who should give people health care, that's not, I mean, it's, I mean, it's not, but to me, what I think is, is more, this is more about, okay, we give the Charmony Dove a bionic enhancement so that I can super become, uh, it can become a super dove and it can fly forever. But that's really what I see this as, as opposed to how this will help people. We're just helping people. Because, I mean, Robin herself says, why don't we just help them? Why do we have to put them in a delusion? Interesting. Since you've made up your mind, allow me to reveal what fate this choice will bring to the fledgling. From what I've observed, there are at least three predators in that yard that prey on small birds. The Vosicle Scorpion, Asdana Wolverine, and the Huntington Winged Snake. Okay, that, 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 that last thing is definitely not real, but whatever. Even if they shy away from humans, these animals are still near apex predators in a fenced location like a yard. In such a location, only one fate awaits that little Charmony Dove. 